What up nerds, it's Jason here from Custom Cans and today we've got something a bit different. I was uh, putting in our order with Bear Dynamic, get some new stock in, and uh, I saw these, the, the, the DT240 Pro. It's not something that we've looked at before because uh, we generally have to, you know, do slightly higher end stuff uh, just to be able to make some money on it when we when we customise them or modify them. So we don't generally get to look at their cheaper headphones, but I was a bit interested because all of their all their other stuff is built, you know, it's a very bare dynamic way. It's all really repairable and, uh, and and nice like that. So I was just wondering what happens with the cheaper one in their range. So what we'll do is uh, we'll bust these open and see how they're made and see if they've got that same bare dynamic DNA or whether they've, uh, I don't know, whether they've cheaped out a little bit on the manufacturing processes. Obviously they've got to cost, cut costs somewhere. These cost half as much as the, as the other, you know, these are probably 50. 50 pounds, something like that, as opposed to 100 and something, which is where their uh, DT 770s, 990s, the other pro stuff is. So it'd just be interesting to see where the money's gone and where they've saved some money. Also, I've never had a look at this, so it's always interesting to have a look at something else. Hopefully, oh, sorry, they've got twisty things here. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, this month we're going to start a new project here where we're gonna try and design our own headphones. So I'm trying to look at as many pairs as I can, see things I like, see things I don't like, uh, to try and help us design some headphones. We're gonna try and design two pairs, one kind of high-end, one more for the kind of studio. Um, but yeah, it'll be really interesting and uh, I'm gradually going through it. What I'm realizing as a, as a product designer is the headband is one of the hardest parts to get right, it's going to be probably one of the most expensive parts of the headphone to develop. Maybe not to produce, but all the design and testing to get a headband that, that works. It's going to be much more difficult. Like the ear cup, there's a lot of stuff that goes on inside, but uh, it's it's a much more simple build. This, you've got to have spring steel and swivelly hinges and stuff, and all that stuff's got, not going to break. Uh, sorry, anyway, um, let's, let's get on with having a look inside. So here are the... Pro 240, as you can see, they've got the hinges so the ear cups like flat, which is nice. Also, you've got to stick them in a bag or something like that if you're using these out and about. Uh, it's a weird looking headband, isn't it? Quite for maybe for cone heads? I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, when, once you stretch it out, it makes makes a bit more sense. So look, so you've got quite small Phillips screws. So the fasteners are definitely smaller than you get on the on the higher end kind of pro stuff, around 100 pounds. But let's start by removing the ear pads, and we'll have a look inside the driver. So, so, like, so we got some screws in there. Let's undo those. But yeah, in here, similar design to the other bare dynamic ones where you've got the driver in the center and then you've got some paper for tuning around the outside. So that, you know, obviously the, the, the designers at bare dynamic are working on the DT770s, 990s, the higher ones. They've got a certain way of tuning that they like to go about and uh, using different grades of tissue paper. Is their jam, baby. Let's get this out. I wonder how many screws we have to undo before the thing comes off. So we've got the four screws around the outside. Does that loosen it? No. Looks like we've got to undo all eight. So yeah, you've got two either side of the hinges, which will be for reinforcing the hinges, which is a good thing. Let's undo all of these. Now then these do have a detachable cable, which is quite nice, because obviously the DT770 and 990 don't, as standard. Um, Come and see me if you want them detachable. Uh, <laughs> we sell them pre-modded on our website. Uh, okay. Oh, not a lot of not a lot of dangle room on the cable. Ooh. That's uh, how on earth do they solder that together? Sorry, I can't even get this out. That's strange. Right, give me a moment. I'm just going to unsolder this, and uh, then we'll get a bit further into this and see what's going on inside. Cool. All right, we've got that off. I don't know if you can see that. Look how short those wires are that's ho that are holding the driver on. And it's kind of glued in. So that's into... No. I don't know. They must solder it onto the driver and then pull the wires through because there's not really enough in there to unsolder that or solder it back on nicely, which uh, definitely gets minus repairability because that's going to make that removing that driver really difficult. Um, so let's have a look at the back of the driver here. So as you can see, you've got the paper on the back here and a little hole which will be for tuning. I don't know if you've watched my video tuning the Sony's, but basically, yeah, the bigger that hole is, the more bass you're going to get, and the smaller that hole is, the less bass you're going to get. So they use it for a little bit of tuning. You can also, uh, I've been speaking to some Chinese manufacturers of drivers recently, 
just to kind of find out more about that ready for us to start designing our own and uh, yeah you can get different grades of tissue paper as well so rather than poking a hole in it you can just get a lighter weight tissue paper and uh, and do it that way so i'm not sure what the advantage of one or the other is so i'm gonna have to have a bit of a bit of an experiment but this is how bear dynamic have done it with a hole which seems quite common uh, a little you can see a little bit of pen mark there an actual human has looked at this and put his little pen mark on there one thing i'm noticing is that both of these have got an r in so they're not symmetrical they've had to make a different part for left and right uh, which is one thing that we're probably not going to be able to do because we've got to make as much symmetrical as possible to cut down on costs because if you've got two parts, you've got two tools, blah, 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 blah. So as much as possible has got to be symmetrical when we design ours to keep costs down, hopefully, for the first one. Then once we sell a million of those and we've got millions of pounds, yeah, we can, we can go, we can be a bit more adventurous. Yeah, it's a pretty bog standard driver. How big is the driver on this? It's looking about... 35 mil, roughly the driver, you know, maybe 40, no, it's not quite 40, no, no, I'm going to say that's a 35, 35 mil driver in there, quite a small magnet, uh, the baffle is quite, quite rigid, and it's made of ABS, which is good, this is all quite chunky in here, um, because these are pro headphones they're going to get dropped they're going to get thrown in bags and stuff like that and you need a certain level of chunkitude to help them survive that kind of thing so it's relatively chunky in here which is good let's have a look how do i get to the next next level and again yeah this is this is marked right made of abs so on the top here you've got a small base port which are going to be for tuning it'll let the air in and out of the in and out of the enclosure it's glued on right, so you can leave this up by the hinges so you don't mark it too much and it's got a, an outer ring by the look of it which is glued on separately okay so you've got that oh which is a bit of actual metal pressed pressed metal probably is it aluminium let's have a look have we got a magnet oh i suppose i've got a magnet in the driver haven't i yeah aluminium Okay, right, we're another layer, another layer deep now. <laughs> oh, has this centre bit come off as well? Ooh. Yeah, so that centre panel comes off and reveals the, the socket underneath. So you can see here you've got the signal comes in, you've got the single signal routing comes down this cable through the headband to the other ear cup, and this short one goes through and into the other one. And there is a lot of excess wire there, so I think on this one they just haven't pulled it through enough. So that, yeah, so they must solder it on this side and then pull it through there. But it does mean that if you get the back off here, you can pull some excess through and then it will be, you will be able to fix it. And the little uh, sockets there held in with two screws. Um, and then underneath, it's well supported, so you've got lots of, lots of support under there. So the socket is unlikely to break, because that is a thing with these. But yeah, that looks really nicely supported, so that's probably not going to break too easily and then this should release the air cup from the from the hinge okay right cool so yeah so that's quite interesting that's a three-part casing for the air cup let's get a bit deeper let's get these hinges undone so same size screws for the hinges as the air cups which is nice I like it I like it when the screws are all the same size. It makes it much easier to remember where they go when you put them back. So we've got the back off there. So as you can see, this swivel hinge is all metal held in with a circlip there uh, with the cable routing, which is nicely designed. So the cable isn't going to get caught and stuff and wear out. Uh, then you've got spring steel headband screwed onto this. This is usually the weak point of the headphones where it's going to break most and I would have liked to have seen the steel part here supported internally so some kind of support jutting up here because it's all supported by this bottom part. Yeah so that's that's going to be the weak point of the headphones I think that's where it's it's likely to break. Same size screw again nice nice so that comes off there Yeah, so it seems like nearly all the plastics on this are ABS. 
So you can see you've got the cable routing there. So you've got a plastic bit of channel that goes through the headband that routes the cable separated from the steel headband. Uh, more, more steel in there. So this this arm is steel. Oh yeah, sorry, spring steel for the headband, and that's the arm with the clicky mechanism. So overall, you know, the build quality is pretty good. You know, for a fifty-pound pair of studio headphones, it's pretty good. It's about about what you'd expect. It's not quite as good as the hundred-pound ones, but better than your kind of consumer consumer stuff. What I would say though is if you're it's, it's difficult because obviously um, there's sometimes money constraints and you need to spend a bit less on your equipment uh, like you know if you need 50 pairs or something for a, for a project but if it's something that you're using regularly if it's for yourself you're going to use it all the time I would probably go up to the hundred pound mark so uh, if you want something small and lightweight like this probably the Sennheiser HD25 or if you don't mind them a bit chunky go for the DT770 990 just uh, for a repair, from a repairability point of view, you want to buy one decent pair of headphones that's going to last you forever. And if you buy one of those, you can buy all the parts for them. They're easy to change, that kind of stuff. This doesn't look like it's designed to kind of be user repairable. Um, so, yeah, if it's something that you want to keep forever or something that you're going to keep using, uh, like, you know, if you're in a studio and people are going to be using it all the time and they're potentially going to break it, get, get, get the next one up because you want to be able to fix that, really. So anyway, it's quite interesting having a look inside uh, the slightly cheaper end Bear Dynamic headphones. And uh, I, I'm going to have a listen to them and we'll, we'll see what they sound like. I'll just get them back together. But not for me. Uh, no, I don't, don't think so. I think it's worth going up in price to around, around the 100, 130 pound, which is where the, the sort of next level up is. Just from just for a durability and repairability kind of thing, just because yeah, I don't know. Studio headphones get abused, and they need uh, they need to be a bit bit stronger than this. Or oh, I suppose um, the Sennheiser HD two eighty that is a that's a similar kind of thing, but it's just got slightly. I don't know. Maybe this hinge is fine. I don't know. If you've had experience of these, uh, let me know. This, this is the only concern I've got really, is this, where the ear cups attached to the headband, it doesn't seem quite as strong as I would like, and it doesn't seem super easy to fix if you, um, if you break it. So yeah, I had a good old listen to these, and uh, it's, a, it's an interesting sound. It doesn't have that Bayer peak that a lot of the Bayer Dynamics have. Uh, it's got, for, for a cheapy, cheapy, small pair, of, I'm, I'm sorry, I know 50 pounds, 50, 60 pounds probably doesn't seem cheap to some people, but relatively inexpensive pair of studio headphones uh, it's got good bass extension the bass drops down really low uh, the mids are crisp the highs are crisp the deal breaker for me is the mid bass which is a bit muddy it's got something weird going on there which i found a bit too distracting i couldn't enjoy the music there was a weird little peak in there in the kind of mid bass which i did not enjoy i did have a look online to see if I could find any broken pairs of these. Um, so I searched for, you know, DT240 and broken and stuff like that. And I couldn't really see anyone complaining about bits breaking. So they must be solid enough. And that, that little thing in the hinge must must be enough to hold them together. Uh, I did notice that the cake, it comes with a cable, which is you know, quite light and floppy, but um, at least it's replaceable. But I did notice it can go in either side, which I'm quite surprised about because as I said, they've got a left and a right molding. So they don't need to put this on both sides. So I would have thought that's just extra expense putting that extra socket in there. And they've also got the cable going through the headband. So it's not even, it's, it's, a, it's a weird design decision, but I suppose to some people, it might be very important which side the cable goes. Uh, it doesn't really bother me, but um, yeah, I would have preferred that that money, I don't know, went into a bit more tweaking and tuning, maybe get rid of that mid bass hump. So uh, yeah, it's quite interesting seeing inside a cheaper pair of, he cheaper pair of Bayer Dynamics to see what bear dynamic DNA there is, and uh, you know they do have a commitment to ruggedness, but uh, these are just definitely not as repairable as the higher end ones. Sounds not as good. I would say you get what you pay for. These are half the price, and they're probably about half as good. Uh, I'd I'd spend the extra get some DT770s or something like that. But I suppose if you want a portable pair, they're okay if you really love bear dynamic. But again. HC25 if you want something that, that kind of size, or in Bear Dynamic, uh, DT1350, something like that. 
uh, which is more expensive, but it's amazing. They sound really good. Um, whereas these ones are meh. Um, you do get a little cloth case by the look of it. What's in here? Oh, you got a little bag to keep them in. Oh, isn't that nice? It's a nicer bag than you get with the DT770, so it's got that going for it. So I hope you found that vaguely interesting, and uh, I'll, I'll stick a link in the thing if you fancy helping make more videos. Buy some of our fancy storage straps. Ugh, Velcro straps that'll keep your cables and headphones together. Uh, every penny we get off those, we put into making more videos. So anyway, uh, super awesome hanging out. See you guys again. Hopefully with something more exciting. We've got a big box of Hi-Fi Man stuff just behind the cable. So I'm going to bust some of those out now and uh, have a look inside those. Anyway, awesome hanging out. See you guys again.